Hello everyone and welcome. In this lecture, we'll look at linear regression from a case study approach. What we'll do is we'll, we'll explore a data set, which is an actual data set, and we'll see some examples of linear regression. So this is a summary of what we will go through. We'll start by exploring our data set and try to visualize it. And then we'll train and create a linear regression model of our data set. After that, we'll evaluate our model and make some predictions, which will be followed by a calculation of the root mean square error. And then we'll consider some more features or less features and build another linear regression model and compare the two models that we got. Great. So we'll start by importing the libraries that we need import pandas as pd, import numpy as np, import seaborn as sns, and we have the magic function here, matplotlib inline, to visualize our graphs in, Mat in Jupyter Notebook. And we'll import the remaining libraries that we need as we go on. Let's start by loading our dataset by using pandas read csv method and we'll save our data set in a variable called house. This data set is regarding the price of different houses in the Seattle area. Okay, let's check it out. pd.readcsv and then I saved it where my Jupyter homebook is located. So I'll just pass name of my file. I named it home underscore data dot csv. Let's see what our data set looks like. So I'll call the head method. And this is what it looks like. It has 21 columns. This is ID of a specific house. Date, we have price of the house, bedrooms, bathroom, square living, square lot, floors, waterfront, and so on. So one row is regarding a single house. And here is the zip code. Again, this is a data set obtained from the Seattle area. And this is the zip code for the specific house. Okay, what we'll do is we'll try to predict the price of a house using linear regression models. So this will be our target price will be our target. And for features, we'll use, for instance, number of bedrooms, bathroom, square living, and so on. So all of those are features, right? And based on these features, we'll predict the price of a house. So for our first model, we'll take a few of these features, maybe we'll consider five or six features, and then try to predict the price by using our linear regression models. Okay, so this is our data set. And to show you how many houses are in this data set, we'll call the tail method, house.tail. So we have about 21,600 rows. Let's call the info method to get some information about our house data set. So house.info and run it. So we have a data frame and we have about 21,613 rows. Okay. So this is a general information about our house data set. Okay. And you see here the memory is 3.5 megabyte it's a bit big and if we want to see some statistics we can call the describe method on our house data set so house that describe and we have account mean standard deviation and percentage maximum value for each of our columns and if you want to see each of the individual column names we can of course call the columns method so house.columns 
and you'll see our column names. So those are some general information about our data set. Next, let's visualize our data set. Let's start by plotting a scatter plot. So I'll call the scatter method plt.scatter and we'll pass what do we want to see. Let's consider one of the features, for instance, square living. So there's a feature known as square living. So that's how big the house is. So we'll see a scatter plot of square living versus price. As we know, that's one of the important features in predicting a house price, how big the house is. So plt.scatter, we'll call the square feet living, that's the column name. And then price will be on the y-axis. So plt.scatter, and we can label our x and y axis by calling the x label and y label methods. Let's say square feet of the house. And then let's also label our y axis. So I'll call the y label method and the price of house. Run it. Or oh, import PLT is not defined. Let's import matplotlib. Import import matplotlib that pyplot as plt. Let's run the cell again. Okay, let's go back to our cell. Run it again. And this is what it looks like. We have square feet of the house versus price of house. As you can see, as the square feet of the house increases, the price of the house seems to increase, right? Let me make this a bit bigger. Let's pass the figure attribute, the figure method, and then pass the fixed size attribute. Let's make it 10 by six maybe. You can pass whatever fits your notebook very well. Okay, so this is what it looks like. As the square feet of the house increases, the price seems to increase. Next, let's call the lmplot method and see, and try to get like a linear regression line for our scatter plots. So sns.lmplot, and then we'll pass the x and y axis. So square feet, square underscore leaving. Make sure you can get, you can just copy paste the column names from here. Okay, so spelling and everything is important, otherwise you'll get an error. So the easiest way is to copy paste from the columns list that I just showed. Okay, and our data is coming from the house data set. Okay, let's run this. And this is what it looks like. So this is our linear regression line passed to our plot. And this is where it intercepts the y-axis. So we'll try to calculate this point where the line intercepts or crosses the y-axis later on. And notice here the price is in e to the power of seven. So that's in million, okay? Okay, let's see some more plots for our house data set. Okay, let's see a heat map and a dist plot for our house data set, sns.heatmap to see a heat map and then we can call house.core, run it. And this is a heat map for our house data set. We have ID, price, bedroom, bathroom, and then this is their correlation. So for instance, if you take square living, if you take square living and then its correlation with price, it's more of red. So it lies somewhere around here, right? So the higher the correlation, it goes towards red. And you can take a certain feature and then compare its correlation with price. For instance, let's say view, if you take this view attribute or 
feature and see its correlation with price it's more in the orange in this area so this is some general information about your data set you can see some correlation here okay let's see one more plot a dist plot so we'll call the dist plot method that seaborn has and then simply pass what you want to see i want to see of course we are interested in the price of the house so we'll pass we'll index our price column from our house data set and then let's pass a red color so you see here a normal distribution so you can use any of this methods to visualize your data set so that gives you some visualization about you know the relationship of any of the features to your target and so on okay one last plot i want to show you is a box plot okay let's do that so we'll call the box plot method that seaborn has and for our x variable for our x axis we'll pass zip code and for our y axis we'll pass the price okay and data comes from our house data set let's run this so here is a box plot of our zip code versus price so if you look at the box plot closely here we have different zip codes and the prices on the y-axis notice here you see one of the zip codes here the price looks different than the rest of the zip codes right they seem to follow a close price range whereas for this particular zip code you see the price goes all the way to about 4 million right okay so that, those are some interesting things that you can see, see by visualizing your data and you can explore why you know the price is a little bit higher or different than the rest of your zip codes so those are some things that you can obtain by visualizing your data set before making any prediction or any analysis it's a good idea to explore and visualize your data and that's what we did in this lecture in the next lecture we'll continue our discussion on linear regression and we'll see a linear regression model thank you everyone